Hi, thanks for watching this presentation on Hardware Independent Imaging Solution by Altrinsic Solutions. Hardware Independent Imaging Solution, or HIS, can revolutionize the way your organization approaches your Windows 7 migration, day-to-day -day XP deployment, or deployment for operating systems such as Windows 2003 or 2008 server. At www.altrinsicsolutions.com, you can find out more about HIS. You can receive a price quote, look at the ROI calculator to show what a great value HIS is to organizations, or access support and documentation. HIS is a plug-in solution that natively integrates and leverages the semantic deployment solution framework. This demo is going to show you how HIS works, how it approaches the problem, and why it's so much more manageable and effective than manual engineering efforts or other solutionized products. Okay, we have a semantic deployment solution console here with about 500 systems. It's not as big as some organizations, but it's enough to illustrate the processing power of HIS and how it helps you in your organization. In these 500 systems, it would probably be pretty easy for you to understand what models you have out there. You probably have a good sense of that already, but what you don't know is how many distinct hardware platforms you have. And we found that in the hardware independent deployment process, that was essential to know if you want to effectively and efficiently automate a process that allows your corporate Windows operating system image to work on a variety of hardware platforms that come and go and work with all the different third-party device solutions that require special driver handling. Now, in a modern IT enterprise, this is a dynamic environment, and really keeping up with all this is a human impossibility, and HIS brings computer automation to solve that problem. A hardware independent OS deployment initiative is broken up into four steps. They are analysis, collection, or aggregation of drivers, integration of the analysis, which is basically understanding your platforms. What hardware platforms are you attempting to manage and make a Windows image work on? With the driver resources and blending them through your deployment tool, in this case it's Semantic Deployment Solution, uh, to achieve a deployment event that is successful and handles all the complexities of our hardware platforms in a single pass. Finally, the process needs to be maintained so that new models that are added to the environment, new variations of new models, or devices that have moved from one PC to another, all he adds moves changes that affect our platforms and really change the makeup of our platforms we're managing from day to day are supported and stay supported. That's the basic process overview probably makes a lot of sense. Let's go through this process initially talking about an XP day-to-day -day deployment initiative, which is probably what you're doing, and then we'll discuss how to change that to Windows 7 so that you'll see not only what the process commonalities are, there's not very much learning curve difference, but I think you'll get a really good sense how HIS can really bolster your upcoming Windows migration initiative. First, we're going to have HIS interrogate the data that's already sitting on the servers. We're not creating any network traffic here. We're just interrogating the data that's sitting there. We're finding about every single device on every single PC. It takes everything into account to show us something we've never seen about our environment. And that specifically is how many hardware platforms we're trying to manage not only how many different models appear right in the application, but you can also tell how many variations there are in those models. For instance, here we have an Optiplex uh, GX660 class, old school systems, and we can see that we have nine different types of those. There are 16 systems in this one, and 12 in that one. In these compatibility classes, which are our submodel groups, Every single system has exactly and only the same devices on board, so they are compatible. A driver pack that works on this one absolutely will work on these others, but one class is different from another. There's some difference between these 16 and these 12 systems here. And you can tell what that is with HIS. So not only can you um, describe this phenomenon that you're running into, well, we got the model working in the lab, but when we took our hardware independent deployment initiative uh, to production, some of the models didn't work. But you can see why it is and even show IT management what the differences are. So for instance, if I wanted to go ahead and load up a system here uh, and find out another one of the same model 
and figure out why they're different. So I can load them up and do a compare, and it'll show me the differences. Same model, big time different driver pack requirements. Some of that can be just things you ordered with the model differently, video cards, different mix, things like that. Some of it can be third party peripherals that were added and made those two models that were historically the same diverge in terms of their platform and driver requirements. So HIS has a lot of different secondary and tertiary tools that help you out so that you can understand what uh, um, different things are going on in your environment and not only support it, um, but do so automatically. The next phase then is going to be getting drivers and these classes that are being kept current by HIS are key to making that easy to accomplish and highly manageable. Basically, we have four different options. One, we can harvest drivers right off the managed systems themselves. Since systems are broken out into compatibility classes, all we need to do is harvest one class representative that's called a candidate computer per class that doesn't matter if there's one or five hundred systems in the class to be able to stream up the drivers those drivers land in this area right here and are managed through this interface very easy to do um, you can see immediately what's going on with each particular class when it posts drivers and activate deactivate add and replace drivers with virtually one click the next way to get drivers is you can supplement that strategy or replace it entirely where you want to with drop-in drivers. Those are plug-and-play vendor supplied drivers that you get from their website and just introduce into the system. Finally, if your vendor provides you only executable formats, EXEs and MSIs for your drivers, so you're getting an installer package, you can use the applications interface to introduce those into the deployment process seamlessly and in a streamlined way. The last method is there is a connector for HIST that allows you to pull in for Dell PowerEdge servers the current drivers off the Dell PowerEdge CD and it'll run down through the class stack and assign them to the relevant PowerEdge models. You saw that driver collection just checked in and once the drivers are in, whether you man manually add them or you're harvesting them from systems, you'll get color-coded reconciliation between your driver handling and deployment capability and your actual classification. So how, for a change, you'll actually know ahead of time before you try and deploy a system whether you have everything you need. Integration helps you compile an image with SysPrep, completely automates the process so there's zero babysitting associated. It will also allow you to create jobs in the semantic deployment solution environment that blend together the image, then any collected drivers, harvested drivers, any drop-in or vendor PNP drivers, then any application executables, which by the way may be drivers or even driver app pairs where you need specific applications to go to systems with certain hardware on board, Wi-Fi management, utilities, specialty, third-party peripheral device support, applications, things like that. Finally, maintenance will continually re-examine the inventory and find new systems as they're introduced to the environment. So that's a very quick overview. There's actually a lot of utility and capabilities here that I'm skipping over to show you the basic process flow, but you can imagine introducing this not only in your day-to-day -day deployment, whether we're talking XP or 2003 servers, but for Vista-based OSs like Windows 7 and 2008, the migration to a Win7 environment can be accomplished much more quickly, safely, effectively, and with far less management and staff committed than otherwise, as long as you have HIS in your toolbox. That's the basic overview for HIS. There's a lot of features and functionality that I've skipped over to show you the basic process, but if you'd like to know more, again, you can go to the Altrinsic Solutions website. One thing I'd like to quickly point out is the ROI calculator. You can put in your quote for HIS. I'm just throwing some sample numbers that are uh, really not meaningful, but basically put in the data in steps one, two, and three in the yellow area, and it'll give you an estimation of what HIS's value can be in your organization. It is absolutely common that um, HIS, when purchased, will pay for itself in a couple of months and typically pay for the whole semantic platform within one to two years all by itself. 
So if you'd like to know more, just contact Altrinsic Solutions and we'd be happy to give you a personalized demo that covers all the different scenarios and questions that are important to your organization. Thank you for watching this demo.